presence in the name of Jesus and Christ to come. Lord, we thank you for the privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. Lord, we thank you, Brother God, that you have blessed us again, that we've come before you for thanksgiving. We've come before you, Father God, for praise. We've come before you for prayer and for fasting. And Lord, we know that you are good and you are God. There is none like you. There is none who can keep us like you. And Lord, we thank you for giving us another chance. God, we honor you tonight. We say hallowed to your name. We glorify you tonight. We bless your holy name, Father God. For you are worthy of all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for messing up, for falling short, for missing the mark, Father God. Forgive us for wrong thinking. Forgive us for wrong acting. Forgive us, Father God, for not doing those things that are pleasing in your sight. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us through your word tonight. Bless your word that will fall on good soil. Bless your word that we will take others your word, and they will glorify you because of your word. We ask you to teach us now tonight. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and we ask it all. Amen, and thank God. chapter 6, verses 16 through 18. Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 through 18. Last week we dealt with Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 15. So tonight we're going to deal with verses 16 through 18. Last Wednesday we talked about prayer. We talked about the attitude of prayer. When you go before the Lord, you ought to have an attitude. <laughs> you ought to have an attitude. You ought to have a particular attitude. So last week we talked about the attitude that we ought to have in prayer. What do we say that prayer was or prayer is? What is prayer? What is prayer? Who's talking? Talking to God. Talking to God, that's prayer. Communicating with God, that's prayer. Having a dialogue with God, right? Having a dialogue with God. What's the difference between a monologue and a dialogue? Dialogue, you talk to God and God talks to you. What's a monologue? What's a monologue? One-way conversation. One-way conversation. And usually our one-way conversation deals with deals with uh, us talking to God, right? Yeah. We give God our, all of our grocery lists. 
gives God all of our furniture, gives God all of our situations. We give it all to the Lord, right? And once we dump it on the Lord, what do we do? One thing we do is take it back. What is another thing we do? We say amen and we go to bed. So the idea is we, we some of us, only pray when it's time for bed. Y'all believe that? Some of us only got time for God when it's time to go to bed. Isn't that something? Some of us only contact God when it's time to lay our heads down to sleep. And then our prayers are very specific. Lord, lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. The problem with that is, if your soul has not been taken before you die, he ain't going to take it in. Yes, sir? Unless uh, we get in some type of trouble, a, very, uh, uh, a need of something very bad. Okay, so we talk to God when there's a need. And if, if it's not me, we don't have time for God. Isn't that so? We go to bed. So that, that's not none of you, right? You don't just talk to God when it's bedtime, do you? Talk to him all day long. I knew you all would say that. That's the right thing to say in church. Yes. That's the right thing to say, right? So we ought to talk to God. Another thing we talked about is that God is an omniscient God. What is that? And it's throughout, throughout chapter 6 showing that God is an omniscient God. The Bible says he knows what you're going to pray for before you pray. The Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 6, when you pray, go into your secret closet, shut the door behind you, and the God who hears in secret will reward you openly. So he already knows. So what's the use of praying? Anybody? What's the use of praying if God already knows? God already just Feel our order, right? No. God wants us to come to Him. God wants us to come to Him. Anybody else? So God will do something if we He will He will move if He if we if we come to Him and pray. Did you say something? I can't hear you. Better relationship. Better relationship. Better relationship. That's what I'm looking for. It, it creates a, a better fellowship with God, right? We have this lifelong relationship with him, and God wants to talk to us so we can be strengthened in our fellowship. What if you had a friend that you never talked to? Would you have a good relationship with that friend, a good fellowship with that friend? No? I said no. I said no. Because, to be honest with you, there are some people that never talk to God. And they'll tell you, they ain't got time for that. They ain't nobody got time for that. So, when we, look at, when we look at the scripture, this is the model prayer. It's not the Lord's prayer. The Lord's prayer is found in John chapter 17. But in Matthew chapter 6, as well as other places, you will find what is known as the model prayer. This is that model prayer. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. This is the model prayer. Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse number 9 and go to verse 15. Jesus is talking from verses 1 through 18. Jesus is talking and Jesus is telling, he put some things in order. First thing he says is don't be bragging about what you do for people. He's setting you up to go to God in prayer. He said, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. In other words, don't brag about how you do things for people. Do it and go about your business. Then he talks about we ought to pray. First of all, in verse number 9, Matthew chapter 6, verse number 9, he says, when we pray, we ought to pray like this. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father who exists in heaven. He's our God. He's our Father. Not just your Father. Some people think they have a monopoly on God. He's our Father. And he says, which art in heaven. King James says, art in heaven, who is in heaven. Heaven is his place that he exists in. 
even though he's every place at the same time. Heaven is where his throne is. Hallowed be thy name. Oh, Lord, we glorify you. God, we bless you. Let me tell you, if you try beginning your prayer with that, just try it. You will get caught up on glorifying and thanking God for who he is before you ask him for anything. Just thank him for who he is, not for what he has done, not yet, just who he is. God, you're the awesome one. God, you're the amazing one. God, we say hallowed to your name. We glorify your name. Say hallowed to your name. One little boy heard somebody praying, and the little boy said, I know God's first name. So what is his first name? He said his name is Howard. He said, why is his name Howard? He said, because the Bible says, Howard is your name. Howard is your name. So he's not saying Howard. He's saying Hollywood. Glorious. You are the majesty. You are the righteous one. Your name is to be glorified. You are God and you are God alone. That's how we all start our prayers. Thanking God for who he is. Praising him for who he is. And in then, you ought to thank him for what he has done. Has he done anything for you? Mm, yeah, yeah. Has he done just one thing for you today? Yeah. So he says, we ought to begin our prayer by glorifying the name of God. Then he goes on and talks about, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Then forgive us as we forgive other people. The idea here is if you don't forgive other people, God is not obligated to forgive you. You got to cut them loose. Let them go. Let them off the hook. Isn't that something? Somebody who hurt you, you have to forgive them. And then God forgives you as you forgive them. I heard one of my preacher friends talking the other day, uh, probably Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday or Tuesday, and he said that if he can see your repentant heart, he's going to forgive you, and he's going to make sure that he's forgiven by God. But if he does not see any remorse, he's going to go. He's going. He's going to arm up. Is what he said. And people all the time talk about, well. I'm not going to forget it. I'm going to forgive them. Is that, is that real? I'm going to forgive them, but I'm not going to forget it. Is that real forgiveness? No, no. You know, and I think Sister Henry said it last week, you know that you have forgiven someone when it doesn't hurt you like you used to hurt you. That's right. When you don't feel the same way about the person that you used to feel about. You know you've forgiven them when you can honestly pray for them. Mm -hmm. yep. Lord, pray God, kill them off. <laughs> forgiveness has not come your way. <laughs> you haven't thought forgiveness. You haven't prayed forgiveness. You have not acted out forgiveness. You have not forgiven anybody. If you said, Lord, just, just take them on out of here. I'm sick and tired of them, and I know you're sick and tired of them too. So Jesus says, as we forgive others, we are, we are forgiven. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us our debtors as we forgive our debtors. And the thing about unforgiveness, you hold yourself hostage. You got the person locked up in jail, but you got to stand there and hold the key. You can't go on with your business. You can't do anything. And people just go on. The person that hurt you, they go on and hurt somebody else by now. Yeah. Or they have forgotten they even hurt you and they go on and live their lives happily ever after. Mm -hmm. And every time you think of them, you, you, you get a song. Jesus says, forgive them. Let's look at Matthew chapter 6. Verses 15 through 18. Jesus transitions from this thing of prayer to fasting. 
Let me just say right now while I'm thinking about it, we're in the middle of the Daniel fast, right? Maybe it wasn't clear that you can, you can eat nuts for protein. You can eat seeds for protein. You can eat peanut butter for protein. And I, uh, we get a big spoon of peanut butter, walk around. <laughs> I do it, okay? And you know, they said that when you're married, you be like each other. So. so in other words, you can eat protein, you can eat seeds, you can eat peanuts or mixed nuts, you can eat beans. So just don't eat meat. It's on the Daniel fast. It's supposed to be fruit and vegetables, Sister Woods. Fruit and vegetables. And then some fruit got so much sugar in it, you may not need to eat that either. So let's look at it. Jesus talks about fasting. He says, moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance. Don't be like the hypocrites. The hypocrites, they will let everybody know they're fasting because they're going to be sad about it. They're going to let everybody know. In the, in the days of the Bible, the, the Pharisees fast on Monday and Thursday. And guess what? Everybody they met knew it. Sackcloth, ashes, looking pitiful, didn't take a bath, and all that kind of thing. Jesus says, this is a new day. Jesus says, when you fast, whatever you do, don't be like the hypocrites. Don't have a sad countenance. Don't have a sad face. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. They want men to see them fasting so men would think well of them. They want men to see them fasting so men will brag on them of how holy they are, how spirit-filled they are. But the fact of the matter is, you're not holy, you're not spirit-filled unless you have the right motive. You're not showing that you're spirit-filled unless you have the right motive. The right motive is to glorify God, to get closer to God. And as we come to the end of this lesson, I want to go to Isaiah 58 and tell you why we fast and what happens when we fast. Fasting comes from the word that means to cover one's mouth. Fasting means to cover one's mouth. It means that you're going to let go something. It means that you're not going to eat like you usually eat. Some people eat every two hours. And they're not, they're not bodybuilders either. They just eat every two hours. And they eat because they're hungry. But, but in the text it says, whatever you do, don't put on a sad face. Don't disfigure your face and appear before men that you are fasting. Don't appear before men that you are fasting. So how do you do that in the 21st century? You go on with business as usual. You go to work and look like you're there to work. You go to work and produce. You go to school and you think through it. Well, but what about those hunger pains that hit? That's time to pray. It's a good opportunity to pray and ask the Lord to, to help me through this. I think if you are fasting, then you're going to have some bodily conflicts. Some people get headaches. Some people get stomach aches. Some people get weakness. The other thing fasting does is give you good cleaning out. I mean, it just helps you out. It just, it just lessens you real good. Big Mama used to give us car little oil. Black drop. But when you fast in the body naturally, the body naturally cleans, cleanses itself. So fasting benefits us. When you fast, there ought to be some sacrifices made. You ought to be sacrificing some things. 
you're not only sacrificing food, but you're also sacrificing some habits. Some choice words that you usually say. It's a good time when you're fasting and ask God to take them away from you. Amen. Somebody that you haven't forgiven in the midst of your fast, ask God to, to bless you. Another thing about fasting, when you're fasting, you ought to buy food for your neighbor. When you're fasting, you ought to help the hungry out. I'm just talking about fasting. When you're fasting, you're letting go some things. You're making some sacrifices. Number one, so you can get closer in touch and in tune with God. And it doesn't matter how holy you are, you can stand another touch from the Lord. It doesn't matter how short you have come, you can stand to be closer to God. It doesn't matter how long you've been saved, you can stand to be closer to God. It doesn't matter how committed you are, you can take another dip of godliness and be blessed by God. Fasting. So he says, don't just sit in your face so you can appear before men. So men will know you're fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Verse 16 says, they have their reward. What Matthew is saying and what Jesus is speaking is that the reward that they get from men are the only reward they're going to get. What Jesus says is, Get up, take a bath, brush your teeth, put your clothes on, just like in any other day. Go to work, go to school, go in the neighborhood, do some good. Because those who fast with the wrong motives, they're going to get their payment, and their payment is going to be the glory of men. And they sacrifice the blessings of God. So you have to fast with the right motives. With the right motives. So why are we fasting? We fasting just because the pastor said fast, right? Matter of fact, I'm sick of him every year, every week, every year. Well, we, we haven't done it for the last three years. As we read this book on prayer called Fix My Prayer Life, we realize that over 29 authors have written it have participated. And when we look through this book, one of the authors says, prayer is more than saying a quick, God, please bless me my and my family today. Verse 20, on, on page 27. He says at the top of the page, prayer is more than saying a quick, God, please bless me and my family today. Prayer involves intimacy, intimately weaving God into every aspect of your life. You see, prayer ought to come with fasting sometimes. I mean, prayer and fasting ought to act like twins sometimes. I know we're not going to fast every time we pray, but every now and then we ought to be fasting so we can weave and put God into the intimate places in our lives. So God can be weaved into every aspect of our lives. I told you two Sundays ago, don't invite God in the living room and keep him out the bedroom. <laughs> don't invite God in the den and tell him, tell him, don't go in the kitchen now. God wants to be a part of every aspect of your life. Fasting helps us to get there. So when we pray, we ought, to, we ought to pray like the old saints prayed. One example they give is, is the fact that Elijah prayed. First of all, Elijah talked to God and God talked to Elijah. Elijah prayed and when Elijah prayed, it didn't rain for three and a half years because Elijah asked God to do it. Is your fellowship with God that tight? Is your fellowship with God at the point where, where you can say, God, 
I tell you what, Ahab is not doing the right thing. The king is not doing the right thing. Lord, I tell you what, don't let it, don't let it rain for three and a half years. And check this out. Elijah was so confident in his fellowship with God and his relationship with God until he went and told the people. And he told the king. And he told his wife Jezebel, it's not going to rain until I say so. Pretty good confidence there, Brother Mal. <laughs> it's not going to rain again until I say so. One day there was a woman, this is the 20th century. A woman was on a plane. The plane hit some turbulence. And people were bouncing off their seats, even with their seatbelts on. The plane was going through turbulence. There was a storm. And this woman said, God, I'm on this plane, and I don't like what's going on. <laughs> All of a sudden, Sister David, the plane just leveled off <laughs> and went from 33,000 feet up to 36,000 feet very slowly. Are you in contact with God? Well, God will just answer your prayer. Next week we're going to tell you tell you how, how you need to keep knocking, how you need to keep praying, mm -hmm. how you need to keep asking. Mm -hmm. Some people say when you pray one time, you need to stop praying. The Bible doesn't teach that person. Nope. If that was the case, the woman that went to Jesus, that, that was, a, was a Gentile woman, went to Jesus and she said, Jesus, have mercy on me, and Jesus ignored her. Mm -hmm. Jesus insulted her. Jesus turned his back on her. That woman wasn't bothered by that. <laughs> now here it is, Jesus, God, ignoring her, insulting her. He, he insults her because he says, this, this is for the dogs. <laughs> he insulted this woman. When you pray, you have to get to a point where even if you believe that God is insulting, you going to keep on asking. And the reason why I'm going to keep on asking is because he, ha he has what I need. And now, if the flesh doesn't get under control, I'm going to go on a fast and the flesh will have to get under control. Have you ever talked to your flesh? Paul talks to his flesh and, and he, he talks about Flesh, I owe you nothing. We don't owe the flesh anything. We owe it all to God. One of the authors talks about the fact that that when we pledge out, when we, we become a citizen of the United States, the U.S. citizens pledge their allegiance to the United States of America. And they have to denounce or unpledge their allegiance to their formal country, their former country. Let me tell you, we are not from this world. We have a new home. We are citizens of heaven. We must pledge our allegiance to God, the king of the kingdom. As we, do, we pledge our allegiance to God, we pledge our, le our allegiance to the, the king of the kingdom. We don't care who talks about us. I mean, with TikTok, with Facebook, with Twitter, children are so upset because they don't get enough likes. Children have committed suicide because they were not convinced that people love them. Don't you know God loves you? He offers a wonderful plan for your life. God really, really, really loves you. And if everybody else walks out on you, God yet loves you. God is there for us. We must pledge our allegiance to him and him alone. In the first grade, I was six years old in the first grade at the old McNair School, right outside of Belgrade, Mississippi. It's right after the integration. 
You know, integration got down there a little, little late. So we had to go to the white school. The smart children went to the white school. And so we, we had to learn the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. And at the age of six, I knew that was a problem. Because when I looked up the word allegiance, I'm pledging my honor, I'm pledging my respect, and at the age of six, I knew beyond a shadow of doubt that I would be pledging my allegiance to God and God alone. But you know I would have been kicked out of school if I hadn't pledged my allegiance to that flag. We ought to pledge our allegiance to God. We are part of a new kingdom. Our king is God. Regardless of who walks away, God is still here. People turn their backs on their families. Families turn their backs on them. But God is still there. And the good thing about it, God is still in control. Jesus says, Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Verse number 17. But you, when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, so you, verse 18, so you do not appear to men to be fasting. Get up, put your clothes on. I'm going to tell you something. I, I mean, you know, it's not my business. I'm just telling you what I hate to see. It's, just, it's you know, if you do what you want to do at your house. But I hate to show up some, at somebody's house, Brother Alfred. I hate to show up at somebody's house at 10, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the middle of the day, and they still don't have clothes on. <laughs> and it really chokes my chicken when I'm coming to pick you up, and you're supposed to be ready at 1. I know that's right. And I got to sit out there and wait on you? Jesus says, get up. Brush your teeth, put your clothes on, fix your face. Some people, when they're, when they're fasting, they just drag. They just, oh, this fast is really getting next to me. So they just want everybody to know. Jesus says, whatever you do, anoint your head. Know that you are special before God. Know that you're doing it out of the will of God. Know that you're doing it with the motive from God. He says, not only do you anoint your head, but you wash your face. And also brush your teeth. Say your prayers. Get in tune with God. Remember, this is when we get intimately involved with God. And allowing God to be intimately involved with us. We have to get to a point where every little thing doesn't phase us. We have to grow up spiritually. Where when we have conditions in life that are devastating, we have to understand that God is yet in charge. And when we're fasting and when we're praying, we understand that we have to have an attitude of prayer, an attitude of humility, and an attitude of helplessness. We're dependent on God. In your decision making, trust God. That's why, that's why the Bible teaches that the, the saints got up early in the morning. The Bible says that Jesus got up while the dew was yet on the ground, and he went to the garden to pray. Now, Jesus could have just thrown up his hand and said, Matthew, David, they're going to do right anyway. <laughs> Matthew, David, they die for him? Get arrested for him? I told my wife and my children, I said, let me tell y'all something. I die for you, but I ain't going to jail for you. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. You better do the right thing, because if they come get me, because I won't snitch on you, I'm snitching. I will die for you, but I, I'm not going to jail for you. I don't need any peanut butter sandwich that's been smashed down anymore. 
I've, I've had my tour of duty. Somebody said, what are you going to jail for? I knew he wasn't all that. That's all right. We have to understand that we are calling on God himself. The good news is when Jesus died on Calvary, the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. Now we can go boldly, meaning we can go with confidence before God ourselves. So you don't need the preacher, you don't need the priest, you don't need the lay person. All you need is Jesus. You can go before God all by yourself without any man standing before you. The, the, the tragedy is when there were men standing before the people and standing before God, you send that joker in to represent you and he died in there. Now you send the guy in to represent you for your sins and then you find out through his death that he wasn't even right. So don't depend on me. Trust Jesus. Trust the Holy Spirit. Trust God. So he says, verse number 18, he says, anoint your face, anoint your head, wash your face, so that you will not, so you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in what? Secret. He is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. The father God is in the secret place. So you think you have some secrets. Yeah, you do have secrets from other people. You know, I found out when people tell me stuff, they give me about 10% of it. And they want me to make a decision on 10% or help them make a decision on 10%. And as I dig deeper and deeper, I realize there's a bunch of stuff I'm not told. But your secrets are good with me, but they are better with God. He says, when you pray, go into your closet, your secret place, and when you get there, God is already there. He says, when you pray in secret, when you're fasting, the God who's in the secret place, the God who's in secret, the secret keeping God hears you in the secret place and he rewards your secret. He rewards your obedience openly in the presence of other people. Mm -hmm. Question or comments? The God we have rewards us. Regardless of the mountains, Jesus says you can speak to that mountain. And that mountain has no choice but to skip, hop, jump over into the sea if we have just a mustard seed faith, according to Matthew 17 and 20. So will you pray more? Will you pray often? Don't just use these 21 days to be bound in prayer. Let's talk about fasting. Let's look at Isaiah 58. Verses 6 through 9. Isaiah 58, verses 6 through 9. In the Old Testament, Isaiah 58, verses 6 through 9. When we talk about fasting, we talk about excluding some things. There are several different types of fasts. There's a full total fast, and this full total fast, it means that you don't drink anything or eat anything. Nothing past your lips. Why did I have y'all do that, Brother Mal? <laughs> that's been my failure. <laughs> <laughs> that's not only homicide, that's suicide. <laughs> because you work up to fasting. You work up in fasting. You pray for moments of fasting. But when you when you are fasting, this is the time to take everything you ever had on your mind to the Lord. Let's look at verse number six. Isaiah. 58, beginning at 6, ending at verse 9. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? Who have chosen? God. God has chosen this fast. And when God chooses the fast, he's going to tell us what happens during that fast. 
Is this not the fast that I have chosen? First of all, this fast to loose the bonds of wickedness. To set us free from wickedness. Not only does it set others free, it set us free from wickedness. You know, we like to tell other folk what the Lord is doing for them and against them and for them and through them. We love to tell people, oh, God got a word for you. To loosen the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. Do you have a heavy burden on you tonight? Is there something weighing you down? Is there something that's crippling your mind, crippling your thought pattern? Is there a burden on you that you just can't shake tonight? Mm -hmm. This fast is to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, those who are oppressed, those who are, are, are held bondage. In your fasting time, you need to make sure that you tell God about it so God can can fix your oppressor and your oppression. And that you break every yoke. Every yoke can be broken. Every yoke, everything that ties you down, everything, generational curse can be broken. What do I mean when I say generational curse? What is that? What's a generational curse? Some that have been passed down through the bloodline, bloodline from one generation, from one group of people to the other. Grandmama did it. Mama did it. I'm doing it. And guess what? My children are going to do it. It's a generational curse. So if it's a generational curse, is it something good or bad? If it's a curse, it's a bad. If it's a curse, it's bad. When we talk about good, we talk about that which is blessings, right? So if it's a curse, it's bad. If it's a curse, it, is it something against the Lord? Something that the Lord agrees with or disagrees with? If it's a curse. Somebody help me come out here on a limb. He so God, God disagrees with it. It's a curse. It's being passed from one generation to the other. It's being passed from one group of people to the other. It's going on and on and on and on. It's being passed from one generation to the other. It's all right, Sister David. So he says to break every yoke. This yoke is a hindrance. This yoke is whatever stops you from doing what God would have you to do. This yoke is such a hindrance until it's messing up life. There are some people that have got messed up lives. I mean, their lives just torn up from the floor. And they still making same decisions that are bad decisions and it's similar decisions to what got them here. The Lord says this fast can break every yoke. It can break every yoke. Is it not to share bread with the hungry? See there? Doing your fasting when you're not eating bread, you ought to be sharing your bread. When you're not eating certain foods, Go next door. Go down the street. Take something to work. Give it to them. And let them eat it and not you. Is this not a fast so you can share your food? Yes. Fast. Physical food for the home. And that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. Uh-oh. -uh. Bring some people to your house that have been thrown out of their house. I mean, Houston was so generous when Hurricane Katrina hit. Houston, 23,000 plus people came to Houston and, and we all made a way for them to live. All made a way for them to get jobs. I mean, they people gave them jobs just so they can be here. Just so they can survive. To give to them because they were in need. And that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked, you clothe him. 
Look what the next verse, the next part of verse says. When you see the naked, clothe him and not hide yourself from your flesh, your own flesh. Now, what he's saying is, you give clothes, be more concerned about them being clothed than you being clothed. Stop giving the needy what you don't want. Give them things that you would love to have. Then, now look, look at what he says. This, this, this is my closing point right here. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Then your light will break forth like the morning. Check this out. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And when we're going through, guess what we say? Lord, how long is the night? Weeping endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. We want to know how long is the night. He says, in the midst of our fast, because we're fasting, because we have the right motive, because we're honoring God, because we're obeying God, because we, we are sacrificing, we're in the midst of a fast, then our light shall break forth like the morning. Every morning, I look for the sun to show up in the eastern hemisphere. Every evening I look for the sun to go down in the western hemisphere. That tells me that God is still in control. And guess what? It does not matter what the president does or does not do. God is still in control. God will allow you to come from under your, your burdens and bring you into blessings like the morning sun. Your healing shall spring forth speedily in the midst of the fast. Endure the fast. Endure the fast and, and allow your healing to, to come forth. These are things you ought to be praying about. When he talks about giving to the hungry and give, bringing in those who are shelterless, let me tell you something. You need to make sure that you do what's right and then you need to make sure that you pray what's right. God heal me. God bless me. Somebody, somebody has prayed for somebody in the midst of their fast that they've never prayed for them before like that. Somebody has prayed in the midst of their fast like Jesus prayed. They supplicated for somebody else. And your righteousness shall go before you. God's behavior will be on display. That's what that means. Your righteousness will go before you. That means that God's behavior will be on display. God's behavior. You're going to behave like God wants you to behave. It's going to be on display. It's going to be on display. In other words, God will show you, show you off. God will show others you, and they will glorify God. You know what I'm saying? God wants you to glorify him in such a way that others will see your good works and glorify him. Your healing will show forth speedily, and your righteousness will will go before you. In other words, God's behavior will be on display. God's blessings will be on display. The glory of the Lord shall be your real God. God will protect you. I'm telling you, if you're not praying this season that God will be your real God, God protects us from the real. The soldier's blessed breastplate was, was solid in the front. He had a breastplate in the front, but God protected the real. God himself will be your real God. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. He answer your prayer. And fasting, and fasting. We're, we're asking God to answer, answer our prayer. You shall cry, and he will say, here am I. 
you will cry. And God will say, I'm already here. God will say, I'm already here. I'm already here. You will cry out to God. And God will say, here am I. That's what happened 2,000 years ago. People were in mourning. People had bad ideas. People did bad things. Sin was all around them. But Jesus Christ came. He became our real God. He came in our stead. He died for us. He was buried for us. And he rose for us. The door of the church is open. If you can believe the story, that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. That he gave up the ghosts. That he died on a cross for your sins and mine. You can be saved right here today. If you just believe the story that Jesus died, was buried, and rose from the dead, you can come to Jesus right now. You can come to him spiritually. He can bless you right now. If you've never trusted Jesus as your personal Savior, just invite him in by repeating this small little prayer to me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. We believe if you pray this prayer, we believe that you're born again. We believe that when you die, you will go to heaven. There may be others who are wrestling with this life. You're saved, but for some reason, you just can't get it right like all of us. Every time we would do good, evil is present with us. I recommend rededication, repentance. I recommend Jesus. Father God, we pray now, we thank you for saving us, for blessing us. We pray for every person. We pray for recommitment. We pray for a new start. We pray, Father God, that you give us new beginnings. Bless us, Lord, that we will always look to you, the author and the finish of our faith. Bless us now, Father God, that we will not let temptation have its way, but we will rise up and give you the honor, give you the glory, and give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. For those of you who don't have a church home or in between church home, I recommend homes, I recommend Jesus here at the New Beginning Church. You can join our church. You can join if you're in the room or you can join uh, by way of this broadcast by inboxing me and letting me know that you want to be a member of the New Beginning Church. We'll be glad to welcome you. We'll be glad to have you as a member of the New Beginning Church. It is now offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord. We, we clap and we praise the opportunity because it's a good thing to give to the Lord. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for money, for jobs, for income, and increase. We ask you to bless us as we come to give unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. If you want to give electronically, you can come now. If you want to give electronically, you can give to by way of our Zelle, our Zelle account. 
is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Zell is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can mail in your offering, your tithes, your gifts to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Thank you so much for giving. Thank you for being a part of our service. Lord, we thank you for these gifts. In Jesus' name, amen. When we thank God for who he is and what he's already done, we thank God for blessing. We want to thank our visitor for visiting with us tonight. Sister Ronicia. 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 Ferguson, thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for being here tonight. As we go down from this place, just remember, prayer and fasting is in order. And I do have an announcement I want to let you know that we're going to discontinue our Bible listening until October. We're not going to do our Bible listening. We'll pick it up in October when we start doing Bible listening for the New Testament. So October 3rd, we will start our Bible listening. I mean, October 3rd, yes. We'll start our Bible listening up again. Our first priority now is prayer for the month of January. So we want everybody to get involved in prayer and fasting during the month of, of January. Uh, we are reading and studying this book. Uh, 29 authors here locally. We have Pastor Richard Rose, Pastor Reginald Rose, and, and uh, Pastor D. Witt. There are a few others participating. So we want to, to participate in prayer and fasting. Over 6,000 people all over the world have joined this particular group for prayer and fasting. So there's a need for us to make sure that we make this priority to begin the year off right. Prayer and fasting. We, we do prayer and fasting usually every year. We didn't do it during the years of COVID. But uh, we want to begin the year off with prayer. And so we're reading and studying this book and doing the homework assignments along with 6,000 other people all over the world. The second thing I do want you to continue is uh, our daily reading. Our daily reading, which leads up to our Sunday school lesson. We want to continue for all this year, the daily reading that leads up to our Sunday school lesson. And I know one guy in the room will be so excited for students to be prepared. Brother Miles, you'll be excited when, when they are prepared. Because uh, when you're in Sunday school, you want to participate, and the teachers want you to participate. Amen? Amen. So we want to continue our daily reading, but we're going to drop off the daily listening to the Bible until October. On October the 3rd, we will continue the same schedule. October the 3rd, we will pick up with the New Testament. Amen? Amen. That'll give you some relief and uh, allow you to dig in deep to... Uh, to prayer and fasting for the rest of the month of January and then we're going to continue even now we'll continue with that daily reading that's the daily reading that I send out every Monday to every person Amen. Thank you. so uh, we want to continue our daily reading my daily praise reports or prayer requests praise reports or prayer requests anybody praise report yes ma'am family. We're also praying for the Galvan family uh, in the midst of accidents. We're praying and lifting 
lifting that family before the Lord. Amen. Why don't we stand to be dismissed? Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. God, we thank you, Father God, that you are our real God. You're the one who secures us. You're the one who keeps us and protects us. And to that we say thank you. We ask you to bless us as we prepare to sing unto you in praise and worship. We pray, Father God, that you bless us as we lead down to this place. That you will protect us on the road. Protect us in our homes. We pray that you bless and heal as only you can. We pray for the Galvan family. We pray for the Rodriguez family. Give them strength. Give them hope. Father God, we ask you to continue to bless them. Lord, we ask you to bless the New Beginning Church. Bless every member. Bless, bless every visitor. Bless us, Father God, even in times like these, we will reach souls for Jesus Christ. And that you will receive the glory. So in the precious, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen. Amen. And thank God. God bless you and God keep you. Is our prayer.